What if your city just worked? Imagine traffic jams disappearing. Imagine the garbage bins texting the city when they are full. Imagine public services so smooth you barely even notice them. That's the promise of smart cities. A glittering, hyper-efficient, a high-run utopia where the streets are clean, the lights are efficient, and the Wi-Fi never drops. Not even a single bar. That sounds incredible, right? Well, depending on how you look at it, it's either the future we've been waiting for or the world's most expensive open-air prison with 5G coverage. So today, we'll be trying to pull off the mask of the hype and ask, are smart cities designed to serve us or surveil us? The idea of the smart city isn't sci-fi anymore. No, it's a multi-billion dollar global industry. The goal is simple. Use technology to make life better for citizens. This means weaving a massive network of sensors, cameras, and connected devices into the very streets, buildings, and infrastructures of the city. The brochure is usually something like traffic lights that analyze vehicle flow in real time, energy grids that optimize themselves and reduce your bill, digital twins as in virtual clones of entire city that let planners test new ideas without real-world chaos. A major study from McKinsey claims all this could reduce crime by 40%. I mean, come on now, who doesn't want the reduction in crime rates? Politicians love this. It's, it's perfect for campaign. Tech companies love it as well. PR departments love it. It's a win-win for everyone. And honestly, it does sound nice. Cleaner hair, safer streets, cheaper energy. Who wouldn't want that? I mean, I know I will. But if Facebook has taught us anything, it's this. When a tech company promises connection and efficiency, what they usually mean is we are about to mine your soul for hard revenue. Remember, you wanted to just poke your high school crush on Facebook. Instead, you have radicalized your uncle. And you have turned your hands into fans of conspiracy theories. Here is the fine print. For a smart city to work, it has to do one thing above all else. It has to watch. It has to be seeing everything. Everything has to be monitored. Every single thing. Your smart meter doesn't just measure electricity. It means when you wake up, when you shower, when you binge Netflix, when you use high electricity consuming appliances. Traffic sensors don't just count cars. They track you. Even street lights, they can come loaded with microphone and motion detectors. And this could be good if you are trying to catch things. But what about your privacy? And while officials will swear on their life that the data is anonymized, researchers have shown that combining data sets makes it frighteningly easy to re-identify people. And what this means for my good folks at the park is, the city doesn't just know you exist, it builds a digital diary of your habits, your friends, your hobbies, and everything that is pertaining to you. Even the trash can is smarter than you. It knows how much pizza you had and how often you give up on cooking. That is not efficiency. That's behavioral surveillance disguised as civic progress. This is where utopia starts to morph into dystopia. Because once all data exists, it can and it will be used for control. You want proof? Okay, fine. Look at China's social credit system. It's not one monolithic program, but a patch of where your online posts, shopping habits, even your friends can impact your ability to get loans, jobs, or buy train tickets. And yeah, that is China. That is too far away. You probably don't even know where China is on the map. It's okay. I'm not here to judge. So let's come closer to home. Let's say San Diego. Now, you don't really need to be able to point to it on the map anyways. It's okay. But take San Diego as an example. The city is taught thousands of smart streetlight cameras to monitor traffic. But when protests broke out, guess what happened? The police quietly repurposed the network for surveillance. Now, would you still attend the protest if you knew your face was being scanned, tagged, and stored? You probably wouldn't. Now, would you still post that tweet if you knew it could quietly shave points off your digital profile or affect your ability to get loan, a job, or even to order Uber? See, freedom doesn't vanish with just a bag. No, it gets toggled off, like a settings in an app. I know you're thinking, well, this isn't the problem if the government are building it on their own. Well, that would be if the government were actually building it on their own. The governments aren't building this alone. Big tech is right there with them. Why aren't the walls? Which raises some awkward questions like, who owns your data? 
who profits from him and who decides what is the responsible use. And I can tell you for free, <laughs> it's not you or me. We don't get a say in this. Proto's sidewalk lab project was Gogu's attempt at a smart neighborhood, which collapsed after people realized it basically turns their lives into one giant terms of service agreement. And let's be honest with each other. How many terms of agreement have you read? What are the terms of agreement that you've accepted or said yes to? How many of them have you read in full and read the fine print? You probably don't, which will make you normal, like the rest of us. And then there is Saudi Arabia's The Line, a $500 billion, 100 mile long futuristic city. That sounds impressive, just saying it out loud. But that is until I tell you that the human rights groups report that indigenous people were forcibly evicted, with protesters jailed and even sentenced to death. So yeah, for some, smart cities are utopia. For others, they are bamboozled with better PR. Now, even if you are fine with surveillance, here is a little twist for you. The more connected your city is, the easier it is to hack. I'm talking about ransomware that could shut down the entire water system, black out entire neighborhoods, turn traffic lights into a demolition derby. In 2021, hackers tried poisoning a Florida water treatment plant by remotely cranking up their chemical levels. That wasn't a sci-fi novel. Google it. It's on your way out. For hackers, that's just Tuesday. So the same tech that promises safety could create chaos at just the push of the button. And I mean, yeah, I know hacking is not done with just the push of the button, but you get what I'm trying to pull out here. Now stick with me here for a minute. See, because the universe has a sense of humor, smart tech doesn't just threaten your freedom. Sometimes it's hilariously dumb. Like smart parking meters in San Francisco once glitched and started charging $9,999 an hour. I mean, what am I parking? A jet? A plane? If I park for three hours, I probably have to leave the car there and go get me a new car. Not to talk of parking for a whole day. <laughs> if, it, if it is a whole day, but then it's okay. I'm good. I'll use my legs. They don't, they're not that bad. I'll get me an Uber. And that's just one. Not to talk of when a batch of smart toilets in Japan accidentally live streamed their users. Yeah. Imagine you need to use the toilet. You just had some spicy tackles and you're just trying to let loose, you know? So you unbuckle your belt, you get down, you get into the business, you're squeezing yourself, you're having a good time, you're sweating profusely, of course. But it's good because it's coming out, you're feeling relieved. And only to realize that everyone is watching you and doing your business. And that's for those that actually went in to do their business. Now, like you, Dan, you spend the 25 minutes just sitting on the toilet, scrolling through your phone, or you should be working. Your boss, and your co-workers are gonna see that they don't know you're slacking off. I mean, it's not like they don't know already. But now, there is evidence. Or is it even the one in Dubai? With the smart traffic light that seemed wrong and created the mother of all traffic jams. I mean, the traffic jams over there are premium level anyways. Now imagine a glitch in the system. You, you, you know the kind of chaos that could definitely happen. So, so yes, see, smart cities may enslave you. But first, <laughs> they will humble you, embarrass you, and even humiliate you. I guess the obvious question now is, are we doomed to live in digital prisons? Not necessarily. The tech itself isn't evil. No, don't get me wrong. Technology is great. The tech isn't evil. It's how we develop it and the people we put in charge of it. The people that are responsible for it. The people that are held accountable for it. There's a concept called privacy by design. This is the concept of building systems that collect minimum data required. Keep it truly anonymous and above all, make the process transparent because citizens deserve to know. I mean, it is their life. They will be living there after all and paying for all these services. They, they need to know what data is being collected, who has access to the data and what is being done with it. Who is it being sold to or is it being sold at all? See, if this conversation doesn't happen, smart cities won't be smart at all. They will just be efficient cages. They will not necessarily be failures, and in fact, they might even be a great success. But it is undeniable that they could also be the most expensive prisons of our home making. So, here's the question Has smart cities a dream come true or a nightmare in the making? The promise is real, but so is the danger. And the choice isn't between smart city and a dumb one, it's between a city that empowers people and one that controls them. One that surveys them. The technology is just a tool. 
the values we build into it will decide whether the future is freedom or prison bars with Wi-Fi and smart toilet papers. If that's even a possibility. But hey, so tell me, would you live in a city that serves you or one that travels you? What is your take on building smart cities? Drop your thoughts in the comment. And remember, a smart city doesn't make you smart. It makes you safe, but also easier to manage.